Today we're going to be making Montreal style bagels. Um, first of all, what is a Montreal style bagel? Um, there's two main types. You got New York bagels and Montreal style bagels. Now there's other styles as well that people will tell you from other places, but those are the two main types. The Montreal style bagel uh, generally has no salt in it. For this recipe, we can add a little bit of salt if you want, um, half as much as you would usually add for a bread, which would be 1% or 10 grams in this recipe. Uh, other difference is that they have eggs in them um, and that they're sweetened with honey and they're also boiled in a honey solution as opposed to a malt solution that um, New York bagels are boiled in. One quick note about this recipe is it calls for malt flour, which is uh, diastatic barley malt. If you can't find it, it's okay. Um, the malt basically helps you get um, a darker crust on the bagel and get a nice um, brown crust when you're baking it. Um, it just increases the enzyme activity in the dough, but it's not essential. Um, you can find it lots of places. Um, brewing places might have it. It's easy to get on Amazon. Um, and it's basically a sprouted barley that's been dried and milled. Okay, let's get started. So in this bowl here, I have the malt powder and the flour. Um, and I'm going to, to that, I'm going to add the oil. Um, this is just organic sunflower oil. You could use canola oil. You could also use butter, but traditionally it's an oil because this is a Jewish bread and it wouldn't be kosher to have uh, butter and eggs in the bagels at the same time. Um, so I'll add one egg to this as well. Now I've got the liquids here, which has been mixed together already, honey and the water. And to that, I'm gonna add the yeast. Um, this is instant yeast. You can add it right to the dough, but since bagels are such a dry dough, it will tend to stay unincorporated in the dough, especially if it comes in contact with the oil before dissolving. So it's better um, to just dissolve the yeast in the water. You don't have to let it prove or anything. You don't have to wait till it's frothy. You're just trying to get it dissolved in the water. Uh, it'll mix into the dough a lot easier. So once we have that mixed up, Add it in here. I'm just gonna start by stirring it up. It's a very stiff dough, so it won't all come together just by stirring, but we'll get it started that way. I'm gonna turn it out onto the counter and start kneading it. Um, as I said, it's very stiff. Um, it, it's, once it comes together, it won't be sticky at all. It'll be a nice stiff dough. So once you have it on the counter, you're just gonna push it in with the heel of your hand and keep bringing the dough together, folding it on top of itself. Right now, it's just trying to get it all incorporated and hydrated. So you're just pulling it together Push it down with the heel of your hand, roll it over the top of itself. Keep bringing it together. You're gonna to wanna to have a bench knife on you if you can. It keeps bringing all the tape, the counter clear. It helps you to scoop up all the flour. And you're just gonna keep working this till it starts coming together. I like to kind of roll it up a little bit. I'll keep pushing and rolling. And then I'll turn it the other direction and push it and roll it up pushing it in with the heel of my hand. You have to really work this because it is really stiff. Once it starts to come together into a dough, one trick that you can use um, to help develop the gluten a little more quickly um, is to chop the dough into a bunch of pieces and then work it back together again. And you'll find the dough will develop a lot more quickly this way. It's very difficult to knead, being that it's so stiff. And I'll just bring it back together and continue. So I'm doing this sort of modified kneading um, technique where I'm pushing it in, rolling it back on itself. I'm gonna go all the way through like that. And I'm gonna turn it over and roll it up the other way. So 
So once the dough is, is fairly smooth, um, you're never gonna get it quite to the level of, a, of an industrial machine mixer, but it's, once you've got it quite smooth, this is after about 15 minutes of kneading, we're just gonna throw it into a bowl and uh, coat it with a little bit of oil, just so it doesn't stick. And then I usually just throw a plate on top of that and we're gonna let that rise for just about 45 minutes. You won't see a ton of rise happening in the dough. There's not a lot of yeast actually in it. We want them to be fairly dense. Um, and then while you're doing that, you can be preparing the oven and the boiling water. So while the dough is setting, you're gonna to wanna to get set up for baking and boiling the bagels. Um, preheat your oven to 500 degrees with the rack in the middle. What I've got here is just a row of, of pizza stones or baking tiles. Um, it's best if you can bake it on a pizza stone, but you can also just put it on a baking sheet and it'll be fine like that, but it, it'll cook up a little nicer on a, on a stone. Then you're gonna need a pot of water, um, just a few, two to three liters of water. The, the wider the pot is, the more bagels you're gonna fit in, but generally you're only gonna put three or four in at a time. And then into the water, um, I've put about three or four tablespoons of honey. Um, and we're gonna get that boiling. Um, and then you need something to remove the bagels from the water. So we just use this little strainer here, a slotted spoon is fine. And you're gonna want a cooling rack set up either over a sheet pan over, or over some parchment or something. There's gonna be a lot of water dripping down, so you want something to catch it. And so the bagels are gonna come out of the water, rest on here for a minute, and then we're gonna dip them into seeds. So here I have a bowl of poppy seeds and a bowl of sesame seeds. You can do whatever you want. In my opinion, these are the only two seeds that should go on a bagel, but lots of people like and many options. So our dough has been rising now for about 45 minutes. Um, it's still fairly dense, it's okay. That's the way we want it. I'm gonna divide it up into 105 gram pieces. This dough should make about 15 pieces. It's definitely easier to get an even size if you have a scale, um, even just a little cheap kitchen scale will do the job. Uh, if not, you can eyeball just dividing it into 15. Um, what I would do is just lengthen it out, divide it in half, um, and, and chop off the pieces to get it even, or if you divide it into three and then chop it into five that way. Um, but for now, we're just gonna use the scale. So I'm gonna use um, the, the bench knife and just chop off little pieces and weigh them. And so if I cut off a piece, and um, so that's 96 grams, so I'm gonna just cut another little piece and I'm gonna tuck it underneath, um, 112. So now I've got my piece and I'm just gonna divide the whole thing up like that. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my pieces here. If there's any little pieces that you've cut off, make sure they're on the bottom. And I'm just gonna crush it down, peel my hand. I'm gonna flip it over and roll it up like this. So I'm just using the tips of my fingers and pushing it down and pushing in the seam. And then I've got a bit of a seam at the bottom there, so you can see it's all um, rolled up. And then I'm gonna take that, first with one hand, I'm gonna roll it into a bit of a dog bone. This keeps you from having a big thick part in the middle. And then I'm gonna take both hands and pushing it out and rolling it as I go, I'm gonna make it longer. So I've got it about 12 to 15 inches long. And so now what I'm gonna do is take one end in my hand wrap it around my hand and so they overlap. Give it a little bit of a squeeze and then you press it into the counter and roll it back and forth to seal the seam. Then you have a bagel. Um, this gives you a more traditional Montreal style shape with the big hole in the middle and a little bit thinner, ropier bagel. And um, there's other ways that people will do it where they punch a hole and stretch it out, but that gives you more of the New York style look to it. This is the traditional way to shape these bagels.
So now that we've shaped all the bagels, um, at this point I proceed right to the boiling um, of them. If you're not gonna use them right away, put them in the fridge. Uh, this style of bagel is supposed to be dense and chewy. If you let it rise a lot, you're just gonna have a pillowy bagel, which is not the style we're going for. So we've got our honey and water solution boiling here and we're ready to boil the bagels. Uh, make sure you have something ready to be able to pull them out. Um, and I boil them for 45 seconds on each side. Put them in after 45 seconds, flip them over. It doesn't have to be exact. We usually use a timer at the bakery and just have a ding and pretend we um, put them in, but you can go anywhere from 30 seconds aside to a minute aside um, and you'll see some minor differences in there. So I'm just gonna throw in a few, however many comfortably fit in the pot. Um, and these will initially sink and then they'll, they'll rise up to the top um, fairly quickly. Um, usually when I first put them in, I'll give them a quick little stir just so that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan, which can happen sometimes. When you're doing a, more of a New York style bagel, you, they've risen a lot more and when you put them in the water, they'll float immediately. Um, whereas these take about 30 seconds before they're gonna float. Um, and they do quite a bit of rising now that they're really warm. Um, as you put them into the oven, um, they'll rise fairly quickly. So it's okay that they're not that proofed because as I said, we want them a little bit denser and chewier. So once they've boiled for about 45 seconds on each side, I'm gonna take them out of the water and we put them on this uh, cooling rack and leave them for about 30 to 45 seconds until they start to feel really tacky and gummy. Um, that's when we're gonna dip them in the seeds. If you dip them right away, you won't get as good of an adhesion of the seeds. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna throw in my next round um, and just keep feeling them. And it takes a minute for them to, to feel nice and tacky. Once they're tacky, then we'll dip them in the seeds, which I've got ready to go here. And then once they're all boiled, we'll throw them all in the oven at the same time. So these are almost there. As I said, if you rush it, um, they don't stick quite as well. So it's best just to leave them so that they're nice and sticky. Um, just about there now. Okay. And I like to just cut, coat the whole thing in seeds. Some people like to do one side or the other, but I like to get a full coating of seeds on there. And that way it makes a huge mess in your kitchen and it's perfect. Uh, they're all topped and seeded now, and we're just going to toss them in. If you're doing it on a on a baking sheet, I'd put down a piece of parchment and put it on a baking sheet. And if you're doing it on pizza stones like this or baking stones, I just toss them right onto the stone. So once they're in, they'll take, and it depends on your oven and whether you're doing them on stones or not, somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. Might be a little sooner if your oven's a little bit hotter. Um, and halfway through, you're gonna wanna flip them once they start to get dark on one side. It's been half the time now, and you can see they're starting to get nice and, and dark on the bottom. So at this point, I'm gonna flip them and let the other side get nice and colored. I like the way that they've got this nice rustic shape. I feel that's kind of looks Nice and traditional and the look that I'm going for. Okay, here's the bagels. Um, as you can see, I, I like them nice and well done like this, um, but uh, everybody has their own preferences. Some people like them a little bit lighter, but here they are. Oh. <laughs> They're actually pretty good. Thank you.